And now for part three of my interview with fertility specialist, Dr. Sammy David. And do you think that there is a socioeconomic component to some of the alternative methods that you're advocating? Because for many couples, they simply cannot afford IVF. Well, there's very much a, a, an incentive to try to get pregnant, especially in this economy, when, when IVF costs anywhere from $15,000 to $20,000 for each attempt. The middle class, the average middle class family may have a very hard time being able to afford it. And I, it, it tears, me, tears me up to see them putting in uh, second mortgages or taking loans from family members or putting themselves into debt. And IVF is not a guarantee. And unfortunately, I think some of the marketing of in vitro, patients say, well, you know, I thought I would get pregnant immediately. IVF is, is the panacea. It is the way to get pregnant in the 21st century. The answer is no, it really isn't. The doctors, again, once again, should be asked to do a complete evaluation and look into every aspect, lifestyle, hormones, infections, anatomy, immunological factors, environmental issues. So what are some of the environmental issues that come into play? Well, a lot of the, as you know, there's, there's a big move towards eating food that's organic. So hormones that are in red meat, uh, pesticides, uh, chemicals that you put on your face with, with makeup and so forth, any of these might have an effect. And you can see that effect, by the way, more, more, more profoundly in men's sperm. Because in the past 50 years, the sperm counts have gone down by almost 40%. So there is an environmental issue that's at play here. Is it an environmental issue, or is it age, or are the studies done it's, with it's really, age in account? It's really in, in environmental issues. These are the same men, say 30 years old, whose sperm counts were tested for in the 1950s and now in the 2000s, and their sperm counts have gone down. The quality of sperm and the counts themselves. We do believe it's environmental. Now, do you see yourself as bridging the divide between Eastern and Western medicine? The answer is yes, I do believe that, because I'm working closely with Jill Blakeway and other um, acupuncturists. And, for example, I'll call them up and say, I would like you to see this individual do acupuncture, because I think there is a diminished blood flow to the ovaries, diminished blood flow to the uterus. Um, I'm, I'm going to be sending one patient to, uh, to Jill Blakeway, because there's an infection I cannot get rid of with antibiotics, Western medicine. I think she could, could or might be able to get rid of it with herbal medicine and acupuncture. It, it's been around for over 3,000 years, uh, traditional Chinese medicine. I think there's a major impact and it's, I think they're synergistic with Western medicine as well. How have your medical colleagues who perform IVF reacted to your thoughts on this? I think they respect me. Uh, they know what I do. And I'm thinking of actually the top men who do in vitro here in the New York area. I've been around for 30 years. They've been around for 26 years and so on. Um, they respect me for the fact that I will use IVF if I have to. I will send them, send my patients to in vitro. But I really also think that um, they respect me for the, my diagnostic skills and the fact that I am a good medical detective. And when, I, when and if they do need to do in vitro, they succeed faster, my patients, than other patients that have not been properly evaluated. What was one of your toughest cases where you were able to have success? Okay, two that I can think of. Well, all right, three. <laughs> all right, one woman from New Jersey who was trying to get pregnant for 10 years, seeing several doctors, became pregnant in one month when I found a bacteria called mycoplasma. This was in the late 70s, early 80s, and then went on to have another two more children. Another patient who failed in vitro 10 times, this is fairly recent, her daughter is maybe two, three years old now, 10 times, and she had had some surgery, and it took me two hours to do, remove the surgery, uh, scar tissue through surgery, laparoscopy. She gets pregnant two months after um, the surgery in her own bedroom, no in vitro. And a third thing, one I think about is a woman who was married three times in 16 years, trying to get pregnant with three different husbands. <laughs> and three, you know, several infertility doctors over 16 years. No one ever tested her for sperm antibodies. When a woman is allergic to sperm, she'll kill off all sperm, husband one, husband two, husband three. She became pregnant with use of steroids and inseminations. So those were interesting cases. 
And what is your view on the latest trend in terms of gender selection? There are many couples who are now using IVF to select the gender of their child. Is this ethical? Is this right? Um, it's ethical if there is a, a genetic problem that is inherited through the male or female family. Is it, uh, is it right? Is it ethical? I think it, the, the decision has to be made on the part of the IVF doctor and on the part of the patients. So what are we going to see in terms of women's reproductive health in the next 10 years? What developments are on the horizon? Oh, there may be some things that are very exciting still that, that need to be developed. Um, stem cell research is going to be a, a big part of it, which may extend the, the fertility window of a woman into their, certainly into the late 40s, maybe into their 50s. Specifically, what are they going to do in terms of stem cell research? Well, they're going to be able to find a way of, of taking cells either from embryonic stem cells or skin stem cells and creating eggs with them. So the eggs are still genetically their own, and, but creating a, a baby out of their, their stem cells, their own stem cells. So it is exciting. The field, again, is expanding you know, geometrically, but uh, I still feel that a lot of this basic work, the basic medical detective work is essential for the patient, even if they're going to do stem cells, even if they're going to do donor egg in vitro, or even if they're going to do IVF. And emotionally, how grateful are your patients when they do not have to go through IVF? Very grateful. Um, there, there was a patient who sent me a letter recently. Same thing, there was a, a bacteria that she had gone through IVF three or four times. And uh, she became, became pregnant after antibiotics. And she went to the doctor, an IVF program here in New York, and she said, well, why didn't you test me for it? And the doctor said, well, we don't believe that this bacteria really is a problem in infertility. And she was really angry. They're very grateful. I mean, if, if I could save them the emotional, physical, and financial cost of IVF, they appreciate it very much. Also, the cost of IVF is not just the financial cost. There's, there's a 40% chance or a 30% chance of twins. That's 10 to 15 times higher than the general population. With twins comes cesarean section, which you have to recover from that, and the prematurity with the twins. Um, it, it's, it's complex, but they, they are very, very grateful. Would you say that your success rate with these alternative treatments is almost equal to that of the success rate for IVF? I would say yes, just from my own experience and Jill's experience. When we, have, we, when we are unable to achieve a pregnancy with a couple, they may go on to do in vitro and they succeed. But we have equal numbers who have failed in vitro repeatedly who come to us and they succeed with us. And we especially, especially I think, have better success rates among women who are older mm -hmm. and who have been told they'll never get pregnant. That is, they've had high FSH levels. I believe without a doubt, un unequivocally, that that is the case, that we have higher success rates in that group of individuals. What about when you find infection in either the male or the female? How do you treat that? Well, imagine that the couple is having intercourse. So if the man has bacteria, to treat him only, and then the woman is a, is a uh, source of that same bacteria, they have intercourse again, he gets the bacteria back again, or vice versa. The woman has an infection, the man gives it back. When you do find an infection, you must treat the couple simultaneously. And that way you can get rid of the infection completely. Last question, what do you do with the patients that you cannot help? It depends on their age. I will send them to an IVF, obviously. I mean, it's there as a backup, but we've had successes, both Jill and I, in terms of alternative medicine, um, holistic medicine, and simply uh, simpler ways of attacking infertility. That, knock on wood, that number of that patients that I have to send off to IVF is not a very large number. Do you track your success rate? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Other than we have lots of successes, enough that we're we're still in business. Well, Dr. David, thank you so much for being here today. And well, thank take. you so much. Thank you.